Hello everyone, this is Chris from Spoon Graphics back with another video tutorial for Adobe Illustrator. I came across some great artwork recently with cool typography layouts that seem to be inspired by the Swiss design movement, featuring bold neo-grotesque fonts in some crazy compositions. One effect I particularly like is the stacks of text elements that are progressively spaced further apart, so I decided to have a go at creating a similar layout in Adobe Illustrator. Follow along with today's tutorial to see the tools and techniques I came up with to create this simple but effective text effect with somewhat of a retro vibe. It kind of reminds me of the designs you might see on an old VHS tape box or an ad for an 80s technology brand. Spoiler alert, if you guessed that Illustrator's blend tool is what's going to be used then you're right, but stick around to learn how to alter the spacing of the text with a cool easing effect and to see how variations of the artwork can be created by combining different solid and outlined textiles. To create this series of type layouts, open Adobe Illustrator and create a new document. The artboard can be any size and configuration. Since we'll be working with black and white elements, I find it's helpful to use the grey space around the artboard. Select the type tool and enter your chosen word. Set the text in a suitable font. I'm using Eurosteel, specifically its black extended version. You can activate it from the Adobe Fonts library via the link in the description. Change the fill colour to white. This is where the grey backdrop is helpful, otherwise the text would be lost against the white artboard area. Select the rectangle tool, then change the fill back to black. Draw a rectangle that surrounds the text. It's been drawn over the top of the text, so right click and choose Arrange, Send Backward. Adjust the sizing to create some padding above and below the text. This will determine how much space there is between each copy of the text. If you try to use the align panel to centre up the text with the rectangle, it uses the overall bounding box, which doesn't look centred at all visually. But there's a new setting in the 2021 version of Illustrator under the align panel menu. Choose align to glyph bounds and point text. The align buttons will now accurately centre the text up, so there's an equal gap at both sides. With both objects still selected, right click and choose Group. Make sure the regular move tool is active, then hold the Alt and Shift keys while dragging the group of elements to make a copy. Position it underneath the original. Shift and click to add the original text and rectangle group to the selection, then go to Object, Blend and Make. Head straight back to Object, Blend and Blend Options. Change the spacing method to specified steps and configure the number to a value that generates plenty of copies of the text. I'm going with 20. To create the easing effect so the copies of the text are gradually spaced closer together, we need to find the Convert Anchor Point tool from under the Pen Tool group. There's a straight path that determines the direction of the blend. Find the end point and click and drag with the Convert Anchor Point tool to generate a bezier curve. Hold Shift to keep the line straight. Make sure you have Smart Guides enabled from under the View menu so you can see a little tooltip when you're near the point. Experiment with how much you need to drag the bezier handle and by how much before releasing the mouse. The further you drag it, the greater the spacing will be at the bottom, but the copies at the top will be packed closer together. Select the Rectangle tool and set the fill colour to black. Draw a larger rectangle around the artwork to act as a backdrop. Go to Arrange and Centre Back or use the command or control key on Windows, shift and left square bracket shortcut to place the black backdrop underneath the text effect. Those black rectangles around the text elements visually blend into the background to create the spacing effect. Select both elements with the move tool and use the align panel to centre up the text against the large black rectangle. This effect makes use of just white text, but you can create some other interesting effects by incorporating an outlined textile. Draw a selection around all the elements, then alt and drag a duplicate off to one side. Grab the direct selection tool, the white arrow next to the regular move tool, then click the lowermost text element. The direct selection tool allows you to select an individual element that might be part of a group or an object, whereas the black arrow of the move tool would select the entire thing. Swap the white fill for a stroke in the toolbar to create an outline effect. Drag another duplicate off to one side. Use the Direct Selection tool to select the other text element at the opposite end of the blend and change it to a white stroke too. If you want to create an inverted effect where all the text elements except the last one are stroked, 
we can't simply apply a white fill to the last element because the blend automatically changes all the instances except the first one. Instead go to edit and copy, then click somewhere on the artboard to deselect everything. Then go to edit and paste in front. This new copy is completely separate to the blend, so its fill can be changed without it affecting anything else. Let me show you a simple adjustment you can make to produce another cool text effect. Drag out another copy of the original effect. Right click on the blend and choose isolate selected group. Select the top text element and drag it vertically so it shortens the blend. Hold shift to keep it in line. Click the little arrow buttons in the interface to exit out of the group. Select the entire blend object and go to edit and copy. Then go to object, transform and reflect. Choose the horizontal option to mirror the text effect. Go to edit and paste in front to paste back in a copy of the original effect. Then move it so the bottom text element overlaps the top text element of the mirrored version. Those same alterations to create different outlined styles can also be applied to this effect too. Select the text element in the middle with the direct selection tool and swap its fill for a stroke. Make a duplicate to create the inverted effect. Change the white fill for a stroke for all the other text elements too. Now a problem arises when you try to select the text element within the mirrored blend because it's positioned underneath the copy that sat on top of it. In order to select this element, Use the Object, Lock and Selection menu to prevent the top text element and its rectangle from being selected. Then you'll be able to select the item you want. Go to Object and Lock All to release everything. You can then select the top text again to make a copy. Then paste in the duplicate to be able to change the outline back to a fill for this central text element. That's the main text effect complete but let's finish off the artwork with some texturing to enhance the retro vibe. Choose your favourite effect, draw a selection around the elements and make a copy. Open up Adobe Photoshop and create a new document. The pixel dimensions of the original vector art will probably be tiny, so use the image size menu to increase the document size. You can then paste in the graphic and scale it up to fit within the larger canvas. Download my free photo copy texture pack from Spoon Graphics and open one of the textures in Photoshop. Go to Select and All, then Edit and Copy. Switch to the main document and paste in the texture on top of the artwork. Use the Command and T shortcut or Ctrl and T on Windows for Transform to scale the texture to size. Change the blending mode to Screen to allow the artwork to show through. To adjust the contrast of the texture, go to Image Adjustments and Levels. Move the sliders to adjust how dark the background should be compared to the brightness of the texturing. Open up another texture and paste it into the document. Save time by incorporating shortcuts like Command and A for Select All, Command and C for Copy and Command and V for Paste. Use the Command and I shortcut to invert this texture so it's black against white. It just happens that my document is in CMYK mode so I need to desaturate to get rid of the weird colouring. Open the Levels Adjustment with Command and L and alter the contrast so there's grainy speckles against a pure white background. Change the blending mode of this layer to Multiply so the texturing is visible over the white text. The final result is a cool retro style text effect that cleverly makes use of Illustrator's Blend feature. Altering the spine of the blend helps customise the effects with gradual spacing while combining the text with a thin rectangle helps create the gaps between the elements. Some finishing touches in Photoshop enhance the retro vibe with subtle grainy textures and help to eliminate that clean and crisp digital appearance of vector art. If you enjoyed this tutorial or learnt any new tips and tricks, a thumbs up on the video would be really appreciated. Stick around for more of my content by subscribing to the channel and be sure to join my mailing list at Spoon Graphics to download all my free design resources. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.